having the most interesting conversation with Sebastian Cabot, the very popular star of Family Affair. I was going to say series, <laughs> our, our series that uh, we carried, of course, here on Channel 7, and everybody loves Family Affair. What do you attribute the, the success of the shows to Sebastian? Well, I think the uh, main reason for success of our show is the complete lack of violence, the um, lack of sex in any form. And it, it, this is just pure, absolutely wholesome family entertainment. You can show it to your two-year-old daughter and your great-grandmother. They all enjoy it. And I think also the fact that uh, we all get on together on the set, as, as it's called. You know, we're all friendly among ourselves, and that, I think, comes through. Really? Yes, I think this is very apparent. How about Brian Keith? Had you worked together before? Oh, yes. I worked with Brian the uh, first year I got into this country, which was 1955. He was doing a series then called The Crusader, where he was an American newspaper man in Europe solving all the problems of the world. Um, and I, used, I played in three episodes as a guest star, which was pretty rare. Normally you had one, and that was it. But I played three. I was usually a middle European communist the commissar of some kind threatening him with death, you know. He was about to be killed, executed, but I always lost, naturally. He's a very interesting actor, and so are you, I think, whenever you're on the set or on stage, as they say. Everyone always is very much interested because you are the, uh, the cultured gentleman with impeccable taste. Does this bother you being uh, referred to as a very cultural no, gentleman? No, I, I don't mind being considered cultured. Uh, even if it is a little fictional, but um, uh, it bothers me in life that everybody looks upon me with sort of awe. I arrive in a, in a new town or a new village or a new place, and uh, I'm introduced to a bunch of people, fellows and girls, women, men, and they all sort of stand a little clear, and it takes me half an hour to sort of break them down and show them I'm just really a normal human being. Even when I go, well, particularly when I go, say, to Vietnam, where I, which I do every year on a handshake tour, I get in front of a bunch of soldiers, and they all sort of stand back, and they're ready to salute, and there's always about three yards, and it takes me anything from two, three minutes to ten minutes to break them down to get them in. I usually have to make some crack or insult an officer, which always is very successful among the troops, you know, do something like that, make a patsy out of somebody to get in with them. Well, you have this very dignified quality, and yet he is such a warm individual. Really, you could just sit and talk to you for, for hours, Sebastian. I'd like you to talk a little bit about your, uh, your hobby. Now, this is sort of in Congress with the type of, of person that you are. You kind of like to get in the uh, garage and uh, in the grease in your cars. This is kind of uh, a hobby. Is this a, where you sort of relax and let go? Well, yes, this is a, oh, it's a, a throwback to the old days, and I used to race a bit in England race cars, and I've always loved old cars, or in those days they weren't so old, but I loved the cars that had a character, personality, whereas nowadays, you know, every car looks alike to me. So I collect as much as I can the old ones, and I rebuild them, and I thoroughly enjoy myself. It sort of reminds me of the days when I had to, because I couldn't afford to have it done. And now I like to take back a rare old automobile and build it back and drive it around. I don't just show them, I drive them all over the place. What about the races? Do you go around the uh, country and the world to the races? Not too much anymore. I've been to Indianapolis. I've been to Riverside. Uh, but uh, I don't have the time to go to the good races. You know, it's, it's difficult for me to go to Sebring or somewhere like that when I'm filming most of the time. And that's always when the best races are on, when I'm in the middle of work. <laughs> well, that's always a problem for famous people is, is the time element. Mm -hmm. But, uh, of course, you're the curator for the Shirtle Galleries up in Vandalia on um, Brown School Road, and uh, we're so happy that uh, you are the curator because I know you love art and you've always enjoyed visiting museums and things. Mm -hmm. Is that how you became connected with Shirtle Galleries? Well, not just because I visit museums, no, but I became connected with them because of uh, a thing I did about uh, 100 great paintings. It was a book which was uh, filled with 100 of the world masterpieces, and I did a television thing about it, and they contacted me over it, and we talked, and I agreed to become curator for the gallery. As you know, it's a franchise chain. It's across the nation. And I thoroughly enjoy that, and I think it's a good concept, bringing art to the, shall we say, the ordinary man who couldn't afford a violently expensive piece of painting, whereas we bring him an original oil painting at a price he can afford, and all of them potentially, shall we say, the artists are potentially great artists. 
Well, I enjoy that side of it very Who much. Who knows? Someday they might be a Van Gogh or a Picasso. Well, I don't think you'll find one of those. I think we'll spot it first and pull it out. Before <laughs> we <laughs> Sebastian Cabot, it was so nice visiting with you. You certainly are a charmer. Well, thank and, you. And uh, I hope you come back to Dayton, and we'll look forward to uh, weekly seeing you on Family Affairs. Keep watching. Keep we watching. certainly <laughs> will, <laughs> won't we, girls? <laughs>